Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my little plant wall. Today I thought it'd be fun to go through some of my favorite products over the last month, also known as a monthly favorite. So I'll be talking a little bit about some makeup. I have some skincare, hair care, some really random things as well. Really a nice mishmash of everything. All right. Let's just jump right into it. So when it came to concealer and foundation over the last month, I was using only two products and that's it. And when I say that, I, I mean it. I literally did not use anything else but the Rare Beauty foundation and concealer. First, let's talk about the foundation. First of all, it's what I'm wearing on my face right now. And if you wanna see me actually putting on the foundation and maybe giving you a bit more of like an in-depth review, I did talk quite a bit about this in my last video. So I'll link that down below if you wanna check it out. So as I've said over the last couple of weeks, from my surgery, my skin has definitely been a lot oilier than it ever has been. And so, Maybe if my skin was extra, extra dry, I don't know if I would like this as much as I do because this foundation definitely does lean more on the soft matte side. This isn't super dewy, but this isn't also a flat matte. I would say it's like a nice natural finish, but maybe leaning a little bit more on that soft matte side. So if you are super, super, super dry, you may not love this because I, I kind of feel like it could attached to the dry patches on the face. I currently don't have any dry patches going on on my face right now, but with my current skin situation, I just find that this foundation really does exactly what I need and exactly what I want. I haven't tried a foundation in a long time that is as natural looking as this foundation is. Normally when I wanna go for a look where you can't really see the foundation on my face, I'll just go towards a tinted moisturizer because those are always the sheerest and they're just the most undetectable on my skin. But the Rare Beauty foundation I find on my skin at least is pretty undetectable but it still gives you like a medium and even a full coverage if you do build it up. So I find that to be really, really impressive. And that's something that I, that I again, I haven't experienced a foundation in a really, really long time. I also find this lasts really well. I put it on in the morning, 12 hours later, it looks just as good as when I just put it on. And um, even with wearing a mask, I don't find that it transfers very much because it really does set down on the face. Like it doesn't feel sticky or heavy. It's a very, very lightweight formula. The only thing that I'm not the biggest fan of of is the doe foot applicator. I don't really love the the action of you know swiping foundation on my face with this, although I, I do do it. <laughs> so instead I have been trying to remember to just put it on the back of my hand and then put it on from the hand to the face. I just think it's way more hygienic. But besides that, this is so, so good. And if you're wondering what my shade is, it's 210N, which is actually a little bit too dark for me, but I feel like I'm able to make it work. So now moving on to the concealer, to keep it really simple, the reason why I love this is because it makes my under eyes look Flawless. It completely airbrushes my under eyes. It has great coverage. It's a nice medium to full, but it's not too heavy, similar to the foundation. And I just find that this gives, again, similar to the foundation, a perfect finish to my under eyes. It's not too hydrating. It's not too matte. It just lands right in the middle. And this is kind of only applicable if you have both the Rare Beauty Foundation and concealer, but it's kind of nice when you get to base products that are technically like the same shade name that just mesh super well together. Cause you know, when you try a foundation and then you put on your concealer and the two just don't quite mesh well together, whether that's the formula or the, the color, I think because these two are obviously the same brand and they're also the same color, like they're both 210N, I find that they just blend and mesh so seamlessly together. And that's not to say that you need to buy both. I'm just saying that if you were to have both, kind of nice that they just work perfectly. So now moving on to some lip products. Now my love for gloss has kind of been reignited a little bit. Not that it ever really went away, but I just feel like I had a little bit of a pause. Like I just wasn't really wearing a lot of lip products for like a, a small period of time, but I'm back and back stronger than ever. So I'm realizing now that these two glosses are kind of the exact same color, which makes sense as to why I like them both so much. They're also pretty similar textures, not exactly the same, but so I would say similar enough. One is from Maybelline. It's the Lift Your Gloss in the shade Stone and the other one is Tower 28 Cashew. I have been talking your ear off about Tower 28 Cashew on Instagram in my last video. Like I can't stop talking about this. It's probably one of my all time favorite glosses as far as texture and in combination with the actual shade. I just love it so much. It's really my perfect warm tone, not too light, not too dark nude. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick little swatchy swatch and just kind of see if these two are dupes for one another because I may have just found an accidental dupe. <gasps> you guys, you're going to love me. <laughs> they're, they're literally the exact same shade. Are you kidding me? Okay. This one is Tower 28. This one is Maybelline. 
I will say that both formulas are not exactly the same. Um, I, if I had to choose a favorite, I would definitely say the Tower 28 is my, my personal favorite formula. I think it's one of my just all-time favorite gloss formulas just because it's so gel-like and lightweight. It almost doesn't even feel like you're wearing anything on the lips. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful texture. The Maybelline one is also a really nice, very comfortable gloss, but it has more of like a creamier, gloss texture, whereas the Tower 28 has more of like a gel gloss texture. And the difference between the two as far as actual like look of the gloss, the Tower 28 one is, I find just a little bit like wetter looking. Is that a word? I don't think so. It's, it's glossier. On the lips right now, I am wearing the Maybelline one so you can see what it looks like. Um, and you know what? Let me put on the Tower 28 one so you guys can actually see the difference. There's not gonna be much of a difference though. You can see right away actually. It's it's definitely just, I would say like 25% glossier, more wet looking than the Maybelline one. So I mean, there's really not much more for me to say. These have just been my two favorite everyday glosses. Um, even though I am wearing a mask when I go out into the world, I still do wear glosses, which probably isn't the smartest thing because I, I have to like take it off before I put my mask on or if I don't, then it kind of gets all over my face from it transferring from the inside of my mask. So definitely not the most convenient lip texture to be wearing right now, but I don't even care. I just love gloss so much. It honestly makes me feel slightly more confident just because I love the way it makes my lips look. So I'm gonna wear gloss no matter what. So I have two more makeup products. This one over here is kind of random. It's the ColourPop Freckle Pen. Now, I've never had a makeup product in my collection that was specifically meant for freckles. Normally, if I wanna create faux freckles on my face, I'll just go in with like a brow pencil. And honestly, guys, like, if you have a brow marker especially or just a brow pencil, like, you could totally just use that to create faux freckles. But um, I have been using this specific freckle pen and I've been really, really liking it. I find it even easier to create freckles with. So the one that I have is in dark brown and this is kind of like a pen marker. And here's what it looks like swatch. And you can see that it's not like crazy, crazy pigmented, which is what you want, especially for a, a freckle tool or, or makeup product because you don't want it to look like you drew on freckles unless that's the look that you're going for. And so it creates a really nice soft look. I actually did some faux freckles on my face today. I don't know if you can tell. I do have natural freckles, but they do get covered up when I put on foundation. So it's nice to kind of get them to show through with a makeup product. I also really like that the tip of this pen is very, very stiff. So it does make it very quick and easy to kind of just dot this all over your face and you're not gonna get any weird shapes going on with your freckles. Anyways, it just works really great. I have been using it a lot, just like playing around with it. It's just like a fun little product. It is from ColourPop, so it is affordable. So I figured I would mention it. So the last makeup product that I wanna talk about is a mascara. And now I have been really enjoying um, the M Cosmetics Pick Me Up Mascara and also the Hourglass Unlock Mascara because they are both tubing. But I did mention those in my previous favorites, so I didn't wanna mention them again in today's video. But I kind of wanted to to bring back an old favorite that I think I rediscovered in not a super recent video, but it was a couple weeks ago where I was trying out, I think my old favorites or something like that. And I put the roller lash on my lashes and I hadn't worn the Benefit roller lash in a really, really long time. And I just could not believe why I even stopped wearing it in the first place because it made my lashes look amazing. And I'm wearing it on my, on my lashes today. And you can see how dramatic this mascara can make your lashes look. I find it just does such a good job of literally curling my lashes. Like I did not use a lash curler on my eyes today and also creating so much volume and some pretty good length as well. I just find that this is a pretty good, almost like all-in-one mascara. Um, I, I feel like it kind of hits all the boxes for me. So again, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. I've just been bringing it back out and I, and I really love it. So those are all the makeup products that I have to talk about. Honestly, over the last month or so, I've been wearing very minimal makeup just because I've been so busy like setting up my office and just doing a lot of manual labor. And so I just haven't been putting on makeup on most days. Um, but when I have been, those have been the products that I've been going to. So besides makeup, I do have a couple skincare products that I wanted to mention to you guys. The first one is the Lanolips 101 ointment. I spoke about this in my nose job vlog. Um, this is the lip balm that I was using on my lips. If you didn't know, when you do get a rhinoplasty, you have to mouth breathe for like a solid week because your nose is completely blocked essentially. And so I 
wanted to be prepared and I didn't want my lips to fall off from just solely mouth breathing. And so I brought out my Lano Lips 101 ointment because I knew that this product would do the trick because it's a very, very thick ointment like texture. And I find that those thick lip balms that kind of last for what feels like sometimes hours on the lips do a really good job of kind of protecting your lips from getting too dry. Um, I use this a lot, especially in the winter time when it's really cold and I'm like getting attacked by cold wind. Um, this is a product that works great to just kind of protect my lips because it creates, again, like I said, a really thick layer of protection on the lips. Sounds so weird. What I'm trying to say here is that this product saved my lips during my rhinoplasty and my mouth breathing experience. I actually remember like FaceTiming one of my friends and she was like, oh my God, your lips look really moisturized right now. And I was like, thank you. It's, it's my Lano Lips 101 ointment. And this one that I have here is the coconut flavor. It's called Multi Balm Coconutter but the original one works great too. It's the same thing. So next I have a little eye cream here that I've been really, really loving. I have been on such a journey trying to find an eye cream that works for my skin. I know that a lot of people say that eye cream is just like a marketing ploy and you can just use your, your moisturizer underneath your eyes. I try to do that, but every single time I try to just take my normal moisturizer and use it underneath my eyes, I find that I get really bad clogged pores and like a Melia situation, which I don't like. So this is the Youth to the People Dream Eye Cream. It's supposed to smooth, hydrate, and firm. There's goji stem cell um, ceramides, hyaluronic acid, and vitamin C. So this is considered an overnight eye cream, but I do use this both at night and during the day. So the texture of this product is pretty thick but still very creamy. It's not like a hard bomb or anything. So that's what it looks like. Honestly, this eye cream just does a really good job of purely just moisturizing my under eyes and making them feel really nice and plump. And it has not caused any weird reactions underneath my eyes. It's not caused any melia, any bumps. It just works really, really well. And I love this, especially for right before I apply my concealer or any other you know, makeup near my eyes because it just creates such a nice smooth base for everything to sit on. It's just real, real good. So that's all I really got to say about that. <laughs> so the next skincare product that I want to talk about is a cleanser. This is the Ren Evercom Gentle Cleansing Milk. I do believe that I have spoken about this on my channel at some point because I've been using this kind of like on and off for years. When it comes to skincare products, as much as I would love to stick with one routine, I am constantly trying new things, but I will also often circle back to the products that I just know that I love that works really well for my skin. And this cleanser is one of those products. Now I actually finished one of these, I think like last month and I'm already over halfway <laughs> done this guy, which is kind of crazy. I do feel like I use maybe more than I need just because this is such a soothing cleanser and I just love the way that it feels on my skin. It feels so creamy and just nice. It doesn't feel like it's stripping your skin whatsoever. It actually kind of feels like you're putting moisturizer on your face in a way and definitely not in a bad way, in a really nice, creamy, luxurious way. <laughs> to keep it simple, I just find that it's a really nice, effective cleanser that definitely makes my skin feel clean, but that doesn't strip it at all. And in fact, I actually find that it makes my skin just really soothed and also somewhat moisturized as well. Like I would especially recommend this if you have dry skin that's also quite sensitive. Whew, it's really good. So that's that. So the last beauty related favorite that I wanna talk about is this very hairy, oh my God, I have to clean this so badly. Try and ignore that, okay? This very hairy <laughs> blow dryer. This is the Amika brush blow dryer and this has been pretty much the only tool that I've been using to style my hair lately. So you see this like bouncy, blowout situation that I have going on with my hair that was created by just using this product. I did not use a curling iron. I did not use a flat iron. I didn't use any other hot tool, but this blow dryer and it gives my hair the best bouncy blowout effect. It's so good. Normally I do find that with brush blow dryers, I do have to go in with another hot tool at the end to kind of smooth things out and just fix any kinks in my hair. I do have very, very curly hair naturally. And so typically this just isn't enough because I need a lot of like tension and heat to get my hair to be smooth and straight. This guy and the Dyson Airwrap are the only two where I don't have to go in with like a hot tool afterwards. The difference though between this guy and the Dyson is that this is definitely a much bigger brush. And so I do feel like I'm able to do my hair a lot quicker. And it also gives my hair a little bit more of like this bouncier effect because it is that larger barrel. So that's it for my beauty favorites. I have a couple more things that I want to talk about that are very random and that I don't actually have here. 
the first thing that I, I really have been loving so much over the last month is my Bissell Spa Clean Pro. So the Bissell Spa Clean Pro is pretty much a steam cleaner. So what this machine does is it pretty much deep cleans your fabric. So you can use it on a carpet or on a chair or on a couch. Basically what happened was my boyfriend took his couch out of storage and because it was sitting in storage uncovered, it got filthy, like so dirty. So instead of like hiring somebody to clean it, which sounded like a huge pain in the ass, I decided to do it myself. So I've seen this device in use in car cleaning videos, <laughs> which is one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube. I know, so random. Just watch a filthy, filthy car getting cleaned. And oh my God, it is the most satisfying thing you'll ever see. And a lot of these videos, they use these Bissell spot cleans and I've always been so intrigued by them because they just look delicious, okay? Watching that machine just suck out all of the dirt out of like these dirty ass carpets. Oh my God. <laughs> It's orgasmic. So anyways, I decided to make my dreams come true finally and pick one of them up to, to clean this dirty couch. A lot of people were like, why didn't you just make your boyfriend do it since it was his couch? Um, he wanted to. I basically told him that he was not touching it and I personally wanted to experience it firsthand. He wasn't allowed. So it was, it was definitely my choice. So I posted a couple of videos of me deep cleaning the couch on Instagram and you guys seem to love it just as much as I did, which brought me a lot of joy, honestly. I'm glad we were on the same page. So needless to say, I have steam cleaned my entire house <laughs> and everything is now very, very clean. Especially I would imagine if you have kids or pets that you know make a lot of stains in, in fabric, furniture, or on carpets, that machine will take it out. It will. So the last thing I want to talk about is a tea that I've been making for myself every single night that I cannot get enough of. Now, it's really weird because I never really liked tea. I always told myself that I like tea and I would buy like a lot of different types of teas from my house. But whenever I would make myself a tea, I would drink the whole thing, but like I, I wouldn't love it. I wouldn't really enjoy it. I am now a tea person, everybody, but a very specific kind of tea person because it's a tea that I kind of make myself. So the tea has four ingredients in it, ginger, turmeric, cinnamon stick, and honey. It's really simple. All I do is I finally chop up the ginger and the turmeric, and then I put in a full cinnamon stick, um, which you are actually able to reuse until like no more flavor comes out. And then I put a nice big spoonful of honey, and it is the most delicious, soul-warming tea. And what I actually do is I make a really big batch, and then I'll save it in like a big mason jar and have it for like three more nights. Oh, it's delicious. And sometimes I'll even put some like coconut milk in it or oat milk to make it kind of like creamy, almost like a tea latte, a tea latte. Oh, highly recommend trying it out. If you do, you have to send me a photo. You have no choice. All right, guys, that is it. Those are all of my current favorites. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Let me know down below all of your favorites that you've had over the last couple of months and any thoughts on the products that I spoke about today. Give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe. Ow. <laughs> Just set my hand on my table and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.